Last and no BS introduction to using fib retracements and how to actually make money with it, right? I'm not going to get into the crazy math behind it. Um, I'm just going to tell you how to use it, okay? Now, going very, very quickly, the most important thing you need to know uh, about fib retracements, just from a fundamental standpoint, is you're connecting a low point and a high point together and everything else is done for you, right? It's automatically done. That's the most important part is just finding the low and finding the high, right? Now, uh, the second most important thing is understanding what they actually mean, okay? Now, the 38.2% um, retracement is weaker than the 23.6, and the 50 is weaker than the 38.2. As you move down this line, it becomes increasingly weak, right? So what you want to do ideally is use the first two numbers, the 23.6 and the 38.2% retracement as bounce zones. Everything else, irrelevant, doesn't matter, right? We don't look at that. We're just looking at the 23.6 and the 38.2, okay? Now, uh, we got the fundamentals. Let's get into how to actually use it, all right? There are two different cases uh, where you're actually be using fib retracements, right? There might be more, but I'm kind of just oversimplifying it and jumbling it into two different cases. Now, the first case is going to be a trend. And what this means is you have a very, very uh, clear and defined trend where you can simply plot the low, plot the high, and you're good to go, right? Now, what do I mean you're good to go? Come in with the Fibonacci retracement tool over here on the trading view section, right, over on the left-hand side toolkit. Bam, Fib retracement, plot the low, plot the high. Now, before I even did that, also make sure you are plotting the actual support levels, right? So this is a support level, right? Uh, you want your fib retracement low to be a support level, right? You don't want it to be uh, just one little touch and you're plotting as a low. You want multiple touches, right? In this case, we have two different touches at least. Three is even better. Um, any strong, significant support level is going to act as your low. Now, your high, your high is very, very simple. This can just be one touch, right? It's just the high, right? If you have multiple touches, even better, use that. Um, use, use the nearest resistance level. Um, at the high as your um, top of the retracement, okay? And that's very, very simple. Now, in this second case, this is a catalyst case, right? So this is when you have an earnings report or something significant that's resulting in a very, very quick upward parabolic price action movement, right? And just keep in mind, I wanna take a step back for a second. This is also true on the downside, right? What you would do if this was a downside play is, is, is plot the, the high, and then all the way to the low, right? Same deal, right? It's the same, same um, fundamental, you know, thing, right? You're just plotting the low, you're plotting the high and plotting the low. In this case over here, uh, what you're doing is you're going to realize that this is not a trend. This whole area over here is not a trend. It's one trend here and then one trend here. So how do you do this? Very, very simple. You're gonna look for the nearest support level or nearest resistance level, and you're going to plot it as the bottom and carry it to the high. Very, very simple, very, very easy. It's a little bit messy here because it's not um, you know, as uh, as clear, right? The levels aren't as clear, so you're gonna want some level of confluence. Um, what I mean by that is, you know, have you know this, you know, if you want to balance this 182.5 area, have this as also a, uh, a you know a previous support level from you know within the last month or so, right? Have it as some sort of hourly support or resistance and that'll actually be a pretty clean level, right? You don't wanna just bounce off this 182.5 level and think, okay, I'm good to go because this is the 23.6% retracement. You wanna have this line up with a, um, a support level, right? Same thing with this, right? Same thing with a, with a trending case. Same deal, right? You want to have something else there that will support your, um, your thesis. So let's get away from all the theoretical stuff. Let's jump into an actual case, okay? What I did on AMD here was I charted almost every single support and resistance level, right? I might be missing a few, but these are the macro hourly levels. Uh, it's a little bit messy with the colors. Don't worry about the colors, just focus on the lines themselves, okay? Now, where is the trend here? Well, there are multiple trends, you might say, but the most recent and relevant trend is here, right? Starting at this level over here and going all the way up to the top. This is one channel, one trend. So what am I gonna do? I'm going to chart at the most recent support level, which is this 95 area, and bring it to the top. Okay, very simple. That's one way to do it. Other way to do it is realize that there is an even, an even better uh, a channel, right? An even better trend all the way over here, right? At 90. This is a, a psychological number, right? And it's even, honestly, a, a better trend than what we first did. 
right to the top. Bam, simple as that, right? This trend I actually like a bit better, right? This this is definitely one clear trend, right? Here, it was uh, in a downtrend, broke, broke downtrend, new trend here, right? So this actually would be okay if you wanted to do it from 95, but it's even better if you did it from 90, right? The reason why, it's one clear and defined trend. Now, how would you actually trade this? So let's look into this. Let me just actually get this level perfect and I'll show you how I would trade this. So 90 up to highs. It's a little bit off, but that's fine. Okay. What you'll notice here is that our Fibonacci retracement, the 23.6% retracement, which is the strongest Fibonacci retracement, is lined up perfectly with this little hourly level, right? Multiple touches, multiple wicks. On top of that, it's lined up with the 100 MA, right? So we have the 100 MA here lined up perfectly with this 105 over 104.5 area. So how would I take this trade? Very, very simple. Wait for the stock to come down to this area and buy calls, right? For a possible bounce and uptrend, right? So super, super simple. Um, and this is what I was talking about before, right? You don't want to just, uh, you know, create some crazy level, right? On, on um, you know, using a Fibonacci retracement and not have a reason for it, right? You want to create the level and also line it up with some sort of support resistance, right? That's the most important thing is um, lining that, that level up, right? On the bottom, bringing it up to the top, and then also finding that this level, the 23.6 or the 38.2, lines up with some sort of you know support level, right? If it does, then it's gonna be a much better bounce, right? Because there are more buyers sitting there. Simple as that. Confirms the trade, more confluence, and those are the type of trades that you wanna take. So hopefully this helps.